At Shine 2022, Estuje fought Zane in winner semifinals and was 3 0'd convincingly. Yeah, I mean. It's hard to drop that edge guard as Marth, it really is. Yet, merely two weeks later at Riptide, he turned it around and won a nail biter game five in winner quarters, knocking Zane into losers and later securing a respectable fourth place finish. I'm Pipsqueak, and today, I'm going to figure out what changed in between those two sets, and maybe teach you a thing or two about the matchup in the process. First up is their Shine set, and also where I need to tell you that I will be doing this from the perspective of a fellow top player, and not as a viewer or stats Andy. If I were to go through every neutral interaction, I'd likely spend four hours boring you to death. So, instead, we are going to do this in a way that makes sense to me. Got that? Cool. Going into game one, Estuj immediately uses Nair three times in quick succession and gets grabbed for it. And I'm sorry for pausing here. I swear I won't do the analysis thing where you pause on every single interaction and spend six hours repeating the same four points, so bear with me. Nair is Falcon's cornerstone aerial for most matchups but I strongly believe it's his weakest aerial versus Marth specifically. Marth can CC it, shield grab it, dash away from it and dash under it, his Nair beats it pretty reliably, and his instant fair, F-tilt and F-smash all frequently trade or beat it. Marth essentially has the best combination of long disjointed moves and a low dash to deal with Nair extremely effectively compared to the rest of the cast. In return, Falcon's extremely strong CC and dash dance makes it very scary for Marv to throw out aerials preemptively, which opens up the use of his higher ward aerials like Stomp and Knee. Estuj goes on to get counter hit out of Nair three times in game one, only netting him two trades with down tilt and side B respectively, and two hits that reset to neutral and didn't combo. I swear I'm not a stats nerd. It's a little dishonest of me to frame it like that though, because it's not like any other aerials we're connecting either. Which often happens when you're overusing them and neglecting your dash dance and CC. Sane ends the game with a two stock and we switch over to Riptide. Oh good! <laughs> wow. That went for quite some time longer. By comparison, game one starts out a little bit better as Nair immediately leads into two clean combos and a lot of percent but it's far from enough as Sane gets a quick two stock to end game one, leaving us with two almost identical sets so far. Like there's no better aerial in that scenario. Estuj goes on to lose game two horribly, getting free stocked on Dreamland, whereas he took Sane to last stock twice on that stage at Shine. Realizing that it hasn't worked out for him, he now decides to counterpick Stadium instead. And this is where the magic happens. Man, Johnny. After having Earth bended his way to a game win, Sane decides to counterpick Yoshi's, which makes sense given how SJ has exclusively counterpicked big stages against him. Personally, I think this stage is one of Marv's best counterpicks in the matchup, along with FOD. And since it's less chaotic, it's a counterpick I completely agree with. With that said, I've been neglecting to tell you something important. S to J is not good at edge guarding Marf. In fact, throughout this set, S to J will miss 68% of all his edge guards. In 13 out of 19 situations, he lets Zane back. At Shine, he only dropped 5 out of 10 of them. 50%. Now, Falcon has an incredibly strong edgeguard flow chart on Marth, that the legend Chef Rockman, who is among other things Wizrobe's coach, compiled in the Falcon cookbook. 
what I believe to be the single best resource for learning Melee out there. You're probably noticing that the examples on screen almost all include the use of hack stashing to refresh ledge invincibility, something S2J only does a once out of both sets, in game 3 at Shine. The point is, aside from arguably overusing Nair, which I think is understandable, S2J's greatest weakness are his edge guards. Now answer me this. What stage has abnormally small blast zones, allowing moves like knee or up air to kill extremely early? That's right, Yoshi's story. Versus S2J, this might be the single worst stage he could have picked, which S2J is about to take full advantage of. By now, S2J has started slowing the pace down using more dash dancing and aerials in place rather than full sending nares across the entire stage. And importantly, when he sends an aerial across the stage, he now uses stomp and knee much more frequently. Which immediately pays off as he takes stock one with an overshoot stomp into the corner. He takes the second stock with a quick back air knee punish on a greedy F smash by Sane. And stock three is a classic up air knee. Notice that none of the kills so far came from nearing forward or from edge guards. Finally, he ends game 4 with a clean down throw up air into an edge hog. Sane chooses to go back again, game 5, and the pressure is on. This is where Falcon's amazing weight and explosive kill power really comes into play as he's easily the better clutch character in the matchup. 30 seconds in, Sane takes the first stock with a clean edge guard, but it's far from a safe lead, as S2J quickly hits the 1 in a million Nair spacings, where it straight up beats Marf Nair, giving him an edge guard and a quick kill to even it up 0 to 0. Sane seems to be crumbling slightly under the pressure as he throws out an uncharacteristic dash attack and miss inputs an up smash in quick succession. Thankfully, a second later, a second dash attack hits, but just when it looks like a free kill for Sane, he flubs again, massively, by barely missing his run off air to cover Randall and SDs in the process. Sane continues to look a little shaken up, as he tries to do a short up nair, but gets a full jump instead, which SDJ takes advantage of to get a free up air and some damage. Thankfully, Sane cleans up the stock shortly after. Oh my god. Oh, don't Estudé shields another dash attack from Sane, but accidentally light shields it, which means he experiences longer shield stun, something that is normally a negative, but this time it actually ends up functioning as a timing mix-up, letting him hit Sane's dash forward with a delayed stomp to take the second to last stock. It is game point. Estudé hits a stomp on Sane's missed dashback and gets some percent, but it's obvious that he doesn't want to throw anything away, as he quickly resets to center, which is something he's been doing all game to great success. It's here the Falcon special comes out. The wake up side B. The odds versus Marth are exceptionally good, since it's very unlikely you die from the whiff punish, and if it hits, S2J instantly wins the game. It doesn't hit, but he only takes a 7% punish. Disaster for Sane. After a quick scramble, Sane hits an F smash and cleans up the stock with an extended edge guard. Okay. Sane, though, Sane's like, yo, I don't shut up, you don't know what you're talking about. You definitely don't. Him. Oh, more smash, no, that's Ooh. there. Okay, oh, Randall is right there. It is down to the wire, but once again, Sane throws out a Hail Mary dash attack, which gives S2J the up throw knee. It looks like game over, but Sane barely lives. But it's here that S2J decided that he wasn't going to wait for Sane to win. It's time to finally take the victory with his own hands. When it's right in front of him, he finally goes for an edge guard. And that is how S2J beats Sane at Riptide 2022. I've been Pipsqueak, 
and I'll see you later.